welcome to my laundry room makeover this is gonna be a moody laundry oasis i love doing laundry everything about it and i'm so excited to have this room it'll be such a blessing i'm gonna show you guys diy plaster and all the vibes now let me show you how our laundry room started before we even bought the house so get rid of those put a door in a little laundry room mud room thing the garage that was a video i sent my grandma when we were looking at the house pretty sure we were gonna get it this is once we lived in the house for a couple months we had other projects to get to first and something we found absolutely crazy is this laundry room was attached to our attached garage but there's no door to actually access it that was our first priority to be able to get into our garage with our babies but before we could get to that we had to get rid of those pantries we bought almost a 119 year old home it's just about to be 119 years old it was built in 1904 and we bought the house back in February. So we've had this home for 10 months and it's been like the best 10 months ever. I wanted to do a little background brief before we get to where we're at today with the home, which is why a lot of these beginning videos are vertical because I was not posting on YouTube then. My husband and I love slow living and since moving to this home we've been able to really get back to our roots and just learn a lot more and unlearn a lot of things. Working with our hands is just great entertainment, it shows our kids hard work and it just brings us our creativity in a way. Grant loves construction, I've always loved construction ever since I was a little girl, it's honestly like a childhood dream to live out in this home and just be where I'm at today. Everything about it is just such a huge blessing and childhood dream. but. Oh, that view that night was just so gorgeous. All the views are so gorgeous. Just taking a step back and like looking at your view, it's just so amazing. And then working with your hands is so rewarding. We are like the world's biggest home bodies, I swear. So to wake up and see a beautiful home and just the vision that we've created slowly over time. Blast it out. Woo! Now, welcome to modern day. This was just a couple days ago. We did live without drywall on that wall from July until December. That is lath and plaster, and I'm gonna make my own curtains. This is fabric that I found at an antique store. I loved the um, plaid, and it's like a night, it had the year on it. I can't remember though. This item is actually gonna go in our kitchen when we do our kitchen reno. It's like the perfect height to go all the way down to the countertop, which I'm so excited about. Grant took the reins on the drywall, so here he's just hitting hitting, uh, hitting in any nails that needed to go in. And then when we bought the house, we changed all our outlet, well, half our outlets, to the square um, screwless frame. It makes such an upgrade. It is beautiful. Highly suggest. And don't buy them at the hardware store. It's way more expensive. Buy them on Amazon. I'll have them linked down below. You can get a heck of a deal. I was trying to save these command strip things. You push a broom in there and they stay up and they're actually really nice. They came with the house, but it didn't work and I had to throw them out. Sounds really 
good right now. What? That Chick-fil-A pepper bear. Milkshake. Milkshake does sound pretty good. Look at this one. <laughs> Grant was installing the new light switch. Whoa, whoa, bike! Head creepy! <laughs> okay, the little sounds of the guns were sounding cute. These are all our swatches of floor samples that we went through. We have picked our floors for a couple months now and we just have not installed them. Hopefully we'll order them like in a week and get the ball rolling after Christmas comes down. But I wanted to show you guys some of the ideas that we went with. We both wanted dark wood to begin with because that's our dream floor. Like if we could have any floor in the world, it would be a dark wood. Um, but our hallway and upstairs, like the staircase and upstairs is like a warm medium wood. So we wanted something to kind of match and complement that. But dark wood shows the dog's mud and hair a lot easier. So we are gonna end up going with a really light blonde wood. And I just thought that was gonna pull like too modern, but, and I, I do think that like a, like a not super, super light used to be like in, let's say like trendy. And now I feel like the most trendy is like a light medium, like like warmth in there. And I would love that too. Like that'd be perfect to complement our upstairs. But we are going with like a really white blonde. Hey. Hi. Hi. Should have got a little bit of a smaller thing. Bye, honey. This is a mold resistant drywall tape and I was measuring out the strips that Grant was going to need and cutting them for him so they were like pre-cut and then he could just do the mudding and boom pop the tape on. We got this door secondhand on Facebook Marketplace, and then when we installed it, and then Grant shut it the one time, it completely shattered. So yeah, don't do this at home. A lot of the stuff that we're doing is not correct or proper. Don't do this at home.
Oh my Galapagos Island. I am so excited to share this product. Um, that's my used brush and I didn't clean it out well enough so it's like really hard now. And then this is my new brush. Nice and good to go. I did happen to talk about this in my last video if you guys didn't see it. It's a gallery wall and I did a little DIY color on there. But this product is Rub and Buff. It's a wax metallic product. It dries really fast. None of this is sponsored. It's all bought. But I love it so much. I normally start with like a black coat or a um like a dark colored coat and then stipple it on and then it makes like a antiqued looking color and I normally use antique gold but today this was my first time using this shade in Spanish copper guys you need to buy it it is gore Gino. It's what I was going to use on our stairwell railing, which I probably still will, but I hadn't used it yet, so I had a tube and I was ready to use it now. I'm going to put it on the doorknobs in the laundry room, and then this is the curtain rod for the laundry room. To say Merry Christmas. Uh oh, employees only. I remember seeing this photo years ago and I loved it. And then, like a year ago, when we got the house, I saw it again. I was like, oh, that just feels so cozy, something about it. So I saved it. And now we're after the right brown to make this a reality in my laundry room. Yeah, I definitely don't want a pink undertone. Yeah, no, 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 no. I picked up Plaster of Paris. You can get it at any local hardware store. It comes with a lot too. This is the same stuff that Exo McKenna here on YouTube used for her DIY plaster hood and plaster fireplace. We made it back home. I'm gonna hang these up in here. The modern clean lines I think will look great with the plastered wall, with the plastered wall. Um, this in my second to last video with my grandma, Q&A with my grandma, she brought this to me thrifted. She gave me it as a gift. So it's free for us. Nice square frame, which will look good um, in between the recliners. I felt like the square, not intricate detail would like balance off the old style of a recliner well. It needs restained, but I'll do that in the springtime. Um, and I actually love the color of it, like a medium dark warm tone. I want to keep it pretty much exactly that. It would match our beams really good. And then one last thing is walking in. I know the the glue looks really bad on the drywall but i said grant it's like walking into a new construction <laughs> even though again but i'm just so excited for what this is about to become we got paint grant chose the color and it's cafe and Sherlyn Williams, but a Valspar brand. We did eggshell, so it's kind of matte, but not completely matte. It's like the perfect chocolatey color. This will be also the color we do in our lower cabinets in our kitchen when we start our kitchen. So exciting. Okay, now plaster of Paris we're gonna mix up. Our house is 1904, so all our walls are plaster except the laundry room and the bathroom. Um, but we like the look of that, the older look and the texture that it gives. So Exo McKenna did a lot of texture, like really, really heavy. We're gonna try to not do it as textured and as heavy as she did, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm so excited for this. It's gonna bring so much character and just like more custom to the house, and I'm just excited to see how it looks. So let's, see. let's begin. Add two parts plaster to one part cold water. Okay, that's what she first did, and it was too watery. So I probably will do three to one. Okay, don't mix more material that can be used for six to ten minutes because it, it dries fast. No, Kelsey said she's getting sick, so. Yeah, I did three to one and it, it's pretty watery. Don't mix in a big bucket. I'm pretty sure I did that because I think Exo McKenna did hers in a big bucket, if I remember correctly. But we ended up going to like a smaller like trowel, I think it's called. I don't even know. That worked so much better because it is a little, little batch. Definitely work in small batches. You'll see why. And it is a lot like flour, um, the powder for sure. The waterier, honestly, a little bit the better. So that consistency right there is great. I said it dries quick, so you got it dirt so you can use it in six or ten minutes. Oh, just test 
in the waters. This is doing my plaster art to extreme. No one else will have a wall like it. Except for the actual look out. Oh. Here's this unique ticker. Why? This is unique to our artistry. You can do it too, honey. I know. You bet. So I'm just going to add my little touch. You're more artistically inclined than I am. <laughs> if you are. What? I'm kidding. Every once in a while it's good, but not like everywhere. <laughs> Keep going. You're going to dry up. You're going to get all crusty. Yeah, dry up, buttercup. When they say it dries quick, they're not joking. So we got to discard of all this. It all went to waste because it dries literally so quick. And you don't want it to be soupy because it's so messy and watery. But it dries so fast, you almost have to start that way. And then, uh, because the more dry it is, putting it on, it makes it super, super, super textured. And I want good texture, but not a whole ton. Frick. Probably going to start with a new bucket. You see, it's like so in there. Okay. The texture's so cool, but this is when it was really getting dry. I just literally took my hand, put it on there, and rubbed it. So that was when it was really dry, and then when it's more wet, it goes on more like that, which that has a lot of our, our horizontal lines, but you can mess with it. Right now, it's still the beginning of the process, and we're still trying to figure out the right consistency. This is where the dryers will go, the machines, washer and dryer, so it's not that important. And you can always sand it off if it's more texture than you'd like, but we were just using, it was just drying up too fast, so it was making it way more textured. Later on, we figured out that if you do start more watery, you'll get the smoother finish that we wanted. We wanted some texture and some smoothness. It was important after each mix up to scrape your knife, I believe is the correct term for that, off because it would get dried plaster gunk on it and then you can't spread it correctly. You would have like dried plaster chunks in there and it would leave lines or chunks of plaster in. So about after each mix up, I would scrape that off. That was important. And then definitely just mix it up in that small trowel first. Um, it, you're able to mix up like a smaller amount for what you're going to use before it dries. So it's all kind of figuring it out. And then Grant was the mixer and I was the applier. That worked really great to have a mixer and applier. That way, again, it's just not drying. This stuff dries really, really fast. Now, after so many batches, this is the consistency you're going to want. Like, less than peanut butter, definitely. But that is like a good consistency. Honestly, maybe even a little bit wetter, but that, that's pretty solid there. Start there. This is the last thing that I had to do was going around this outlet. And I wanted to film it because it was, I don't know. I thought it was so fun to apply it around there. So, enjoy. Thank you. 
Once the boys woke up from their nap, I was able to do it both on my own to mix and apply. So it is definitely something you can do by yourself. I just preferred having two in the very beginning when figuring out the consistency, but you definitely don't need two people. Now let's take a tour around the texture. That blue popping through is the drywall, so it is obviously smooth around there. Once I do that last final wall, I am going to try to leave a little bit more drywall popping through than I did because it will make the appearance smoother. That gray there is joint compound. That's what we taped the drywall off with and mudded. You can use that joint compound to do the same exact DIY texture but the joint compound took way longer to dry. I'm talking days longer to dry. So I would recommend doing the Plaster of Paris. It has pros and cons to drying quick, but you can get the project done a lot sooner and paint it a lot sooner if you use a Plaster of Paris like I did. But of course you can use joint compound as well. I just love the way this texture came out and it did make quite a mess for sure, but it's no problem because these floors aren't our forever floors. We did just order our new floors today. They'll be in December 28th to January uh, 2nd, so I'm really excited to get them in, but it just pops right off, and the splatters are nice to have because when you're applying it wet, as we talked before, it's going to make messes, but it just pops right off. It felt so creative. It felt like I was in an art studio, which I loved, and that right there, we're going to just foam through that to keep the cold air out, so no problem there. And I love to see that GFCI outlet because our house had no GFCI outlets when we bought it. We're done. Um, we still have that wall to do, but we have to take all that paneling down. So, this is what we look like. Let me show you. It was so much fun. I feel like I'm in literally an art studio and I was just an artist and did like the sculpture or something. I totally might not have done it the correct way. I'm totally not an artist, but there's really like no right or wrong way to do it. You literally just put it up there, stand back, it looks good to your eye, it looks good. And like hardly anywhere it didn't not look good to my eye. Like when I stood back it just looked good. There was a few spots here I started when we went with the thinner batch, you're able to get a smoother finish. But then like some of the spots, I didn't, this was really, really textured because it's what we first did and it was dry. So it was like really textured. And then we started doing a thinner batch. So up here was just all so smooth. So I went in with some of the dry that got gunked up on the side or on the knife or whatever. And then I put like some dry patches in there. Washer and dryer will be here. And this is what some people might want. Again, some of it's still kind of wet. so you might not get a good full vision of it. We could sand it if we really didn't want it. The washer and dryer will go here. It's totally fine. It also looks okay and it still looks good. We just prefer like a little bit of smoothness. I don't know if it's coming across camera, but this is a little bit smoother with like some deep variations and then like some dry chunks over here. Again, I think looks absolutely incredible. That actually is the original plaster and the original outside of the house, we think, or I don't know, maybe not actually. I don't know what the, this is. Grant said it was, but maybe this was a screen and porch or something a long time ago. I don't know. We'll go ahead and do wood trim all around there um, with the, uh, I can't think, not medallions. What is that? I can't think. Mm -hmm. Not plants. Um, all wood trim around the doorway. So I'll sand this down to the wood and stain it. I'm crazy. I always want to do that. Uh, actually, that will be easy. And around here, the super, super thick like we had and just have that painted the same. Um, they actually used OSB, which I feel like is going to be a hack to get really thick trim for like cheaper. And then um, put the crown molding up around there and then paint the ceiling. Grant doesn't know this yet, but I'm gonna paint the ceiling the same dark chocolatey brown as the walls. Make it just all blend together. It's gonna look so good. We literally were at a restaurant today. Um, I should have actually videoed it. And the bathroom in there was like the exact chocolate brown I wanted. And then the ceiling was black. So, but I just want the whole color to go all around. 
trim all the same color except the like the trim that's all horizontal i want to be the same paint but the trim that's vertical so the windows the doorways i want to be wood um and then we're going to change this light 